Hello and welcome to Tommy Talks TV. I have one singular goal with this show and that is to help you make smarter decisions so that you can have better relationships. I'd like to start by saying a massive thank you, massive thank you for all your likes and your shares and your comments on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. I honestly really appreciate you because what you're helping us do is you're helping us gain more exposure so that we can spread the message further faster. So thank you very much indeed. Now today what I want to do is to do the third part of a series that I've been running for the last two weeks. So this all came out of a letter um, or an email that a woman sent to me essentially explaining how her husband's low self-esteem had affected their marriage. And you know this message touched me so deeply and I really felt in my heart that the Lord was saying that this was going to be a very significant message and I should take my time to actually delve into this whole area of low self-esteem and what it does and how it affects us and all the rest of that. So in the first episode what I tried to do was to dissect low self-esteem and explain what it really is and how it affects us as individuals and how it affects our relationships and then last week I looked at what a person can do to help someone who has low self-esteem. So for instance if you're in a relationship or you're in a marriage with someone who experiences low self-esteem what can you do to create an enabling environment so that that person can heal. I mean obviously you can't fix an other person or well, the whole idea was what can you do to surround them with the right atmosphere so that they can come into an awareness of who God has made them to be. So if you haven't watched either of those episodes I would really strongly encourage you to go back and watch them because I, I really believe that they're going to bless your life. Um, this week what I want to do is to speak to you if you as an individual you know that you experience low self-esteem. You already know that this message is for you and I really wanted to address you today and speak to you know those feelings that you're experiencing and show you how from the scriptures I believe that you can rise above it because you know low self-esteem is an assassin of destinies you know it prevents people from entering into the things that God has planned for them to do you know relationally you know business wise in life generally it holds us back so it's something that you really need to address it affects nearly every aspect of our lives you know and it can impact on on pretty much everything our relationship with God our relationship with people uh, it can impact on how we perform on our job or you know in business and it can affect both our mental and physical health as well so it's a really important area to tackle and I feel very strongly that God wanted me to go in this direction specifically for you so this is you uh, God is dialing your number and I just trust God that the things that I will share today will be helpful to you. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share three key areas of focus that I believe will help you to improve self-esteem. And the first of them that I want to talk about is awareness. So awareness is in three levels. Um, and the first level of awareness that you really need to be you know, conscious of is self-awareness. Becoming aware of yourself, your thoughts, your beliefs, what's happening on the inside of you, your inner world. It's really, really crucial. Um, Socrates very famously said that the unexamined life is not worth living. See, what self-awareness does is that it puts us in a very powerful position to shape our lives effectively because, you know, we need to know what we're working with before we get to work. That's the thing. So you need to really understand yourself, get to know yourself, explore your inner world and become mindful of the kinds of situations and circumstances that trigger those feelings. Become aware of, you know, what your self-talk is. In other words, what you say when you talk to yourself. You know, all those voices on the inside of you and you know the way you address yourself in your mind and all that those are things that you've got to become aware of because sometimes those things have become so unconscious we do it without necessarily thinking you know the way we speak to ourselves in our minds the way we address ourselves in our minds it has a very strong impact on our self esteem so you should be examining those thoughts and asking yourself well would i say these things to someone else and if you wouldn't say them to someone else then you shouldn't be addressing yourself that way you need to be kind to yourself so what's happening on the inside of you makes a big difference and how you view yourself on the inside you know it makes a huge difference you know when the prodigal son came to himself you know he came to a sense of self-awareness that was what positioned him for change and then he said well I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that so self-awareness is a huge key the second level of awareness that you need to be thinking about is God awareness now I cannot overemphasize how critical this one is 
you know, God sees us so differently from the way we tend to see ourselves sometimes. And it's crucial if you're going to get out of this rut of, of um, low self-esteem that you raise your awareness of how God sees you. Because I honestly really believe that we only doubt ourselves when we don't see ourselves through the eyes of God. Let me say that again. We only doubt ourselves when we don't see ourselves through the eyes of God. There's a scripture that I love so much that's really blessed my life in Psalm 139 and verse 14. And it says, I will give thanks to you because... I am awesomely and wonderfully made. That's talking about you. It says, wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. So we're saying that you've been awesomely and wonderfully made by God. You know, the works that he did, what he did when he created you was awesome, was wonderful. But your soul, your inner man, your, your, your mind needs to know that really, really well. You've got to come to a realization of how God sees you. So your soul, your mind needs to come to that full understanding of, you know, how God sees you and how you're positioned in his mind. In God's mind, you're breathtakingly awesome. You may feel like you have messed up or that you've obscured that awesomeness by the way that you've lived your life. But, you know, if you could just change the lens through which you see yourself, it will honestly change your life. The thing about God is this. He does not condemn us even when we mess up even when we do things that we know we shouldn't do god does not condemn us so so we should not condemn ourselves if you think about um the scenario of jesus when he was dealing with a woman that was caught in adultery i mean like the scripture says she was caught in the very act that's in john chapter 8 but what did jesus said say he said you know where are your accusers woman um didn't even one of them condemn you and then the woman said no none of them condemned me and he said neither do i just go and sin no more. So he's saying, I don't come to you with condemnation. I come to you with a proposal, a proposition that you can change your life. You can go and sin no more. So God is more than prepared to overlook your past and point you in the direction of your future, but you've got to be prepared to work with God. So silence the voice of condemnation and switch to God's perspective. God does not downgrade people who are reaching out for him. And, you know, even when, you know, we've made mistakes, you know, as long as our hearts are reaching towards him, he does everything that he can to lift us up in spite of our faults. You know, and then he goes on to highlight the, the good in us. You know, sometimes it amuses me when I read um, you know, how the Bible talks about some of the characters in the scripture. So for instance, when God was talking about David in the New Testament, he says, I have found David, a man after my heart. And I'm like, who? David, is that the same David who took another man's wife, you know, and killed her husband to cover up his sin? But you see, God saw past his mistakes. He saw past his moment of weakness and he looked straight into his heart and he saw that there was good in David. And he said, this is a man after my heart. You read, you know, also the story of Moses or Elijah or Peter or Paul. They all messed up at some point in their lives. But in spite of their flaws, God saw the best in them. So you need to begin to position yourself to see yourself how God sees you. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can do that in a minute. Now, the third level of awareness that you need to be thinking about is social awareness. And this has to do with being aware of the people that you're surrounding yourself with, you know, and identifying your associations and looking at your associations that might be damaging your self-esteem because sometimes we place ourselves in our you know in a position where um, our interactions with other people damage our self-esteem and you've got to audit your associations and be careful about who you surround yourself with so maybe you've got a bullying boss or you've got an abusive family member or you know a critical friend um you know who's you know it's one thing for somebody to give you constructive feedback, but it's another thing for somebody to keep attacking you um, in the name of feedback. So you've got to be able to figure out, you know, what is helping you and what is hindering you and do everything that you can to remove as much toxicity as you can from your environment so that you can manage your mind effectively. Um, there might be things that you may not be able to change in the moment, but then at least you can do what you, you, you know, you need to do to limit their impact on you. So if you're in a, in a job that, you know, perhaps your, your boss is, is really Really damaging your self-esteem because they're difficult, you know, and you know the the way they constantly address you makes you feel.
wheel down, then plan your exit. Um, if you've got that kind of boss who's draining you of your creativity, um, order to your friendships carefully. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, friends who will call you out when your behavior is not, you know, as, as expected, but they still have a deep belief in who you are as a person. So it's not like that yes people that will say yes to everything that you do, but they still have, you know, that strong belief in you, even when they have to point out, you know, areas where there might be a need for change. Uh, if you've got a spouse who is critical, that can be very difficult because obviously you're already married to that person, but there are ways uh, to limit the impact of on you um, by challenging that perspective that they have of you, even if you're just doing it mentally, because they may say things about you that you don't believe to be true. You've got to challenge those things in your thinking. It's, it's really, really crucial that you're careful about what you're internalizing because another person's opinion does not need to become your own reality. So you must manage your mind. And then another thing I'd, I'd like to really say is that you've got to manage your consumption of social media. Because if you want to manage your mind properly, you got to be careful about what you're putting in through your eye gate and through your ear gate. Sometimes we spend our lives comparing, you know, ourselves to the highlight reels of other people's lives. You know, we scroll through our social media feed and it looks like they're having an amazing life. But you've got to realize that, first of all, this is what they chose to share of their lives, you know, and that may not be the full story of their lives. Um, you know, and besides that, we get nowhere by comparing ourselves to other people. So manage your mind diligently so that you can maintain a grateful heart for who you are and where God has you at this particular moment in time. So the first thing is awareness, that whole self-awareness, God awareness and social awareness. Now, the second thing that I'd really encourage you to do is to challenge, challenge, challenge your thinking because what matters most to your self-esteem is not what others think about you but it's what you think of yourself that's really what is crucial so you've got to challenge any negative thoughts that you have about yourself because the battle for your self-esteem is a battle of the mind and what is at stake is the purpose that god has for your life it's your destiny it's what is ahead of you all the great things that god wants to do in you and through you in spite of what might have happened behind you so the thing is this to do what god wants you to do you must see yourself the way that god sees you that is so important you know when you think about uh, the story of Gideon in the scriptures in the book of Judges, uh, when God appeared to Gideon, the first thing that he did, you know, it amazes me, first thing that he did was to speak to Gideon's perception of himself. You know, what did he say? The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Meanwhile, he knew that Gideon was hiding in the wine press to thresh his wheat. He said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon was like, who? Me? You know, I mean, look, my family is the least in Israel. I am the least in my family. In other words, I am the least qualified person, you know, in the entire nation. But God did not miss a beat. He did not participate in Gideon's negative self-talk. He just went straight and said, look, go in this your might and you will save Israel. So that's the thing. God always addresses how we see ourselves. So we also need to address how we see ourselves. You, know, you may have become so accustomed to thinking negative thoughts about yourself, um, and you've just come to accept those thoughts, whether those thoughts are accurate or not, without analyzing them. You know, and sometimes when a, a thought has been a long-held thought or long-held belief about yourself, you, you know, it can grow to the point where we actually feel like it's a fact, and we feel like it's believable, even if it's inaccurate. That's the thing, because we've dwelt in that reality for so long that that's our reality now, even though, you know, it may not actually be a fact. So we need to learn how to interrupt that pattern by taking time to actually scrutinize our negative thoughts about ourselves. Don't allow them to go unchallenged. You know, if something is happening in your mind and it's like in your mind, you find all those, you know, condemning voices, you're this, you're that, you didn't do this, you're not up to the task, you're, you know, you failed here, you're a failure and all the rest of that, challenge those thoughts. Challenge those thoughts. Let me say this. Look, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, the Bible talks about the devil and he calls him the accuser of the brethren. He is not called the accuser of the brethren for nothing. 
The thing is this, the devil likes to masquerade as the voice of our human mind. And what he does is that he hijacks our thoughts about ourselves so that we accept those thoughts without thinking because we think it is us that is thinking those thoughts. And, you know, he just camouflages himself in our self-talk because he knows that if he appears to you, you know, physically and tries to feed you with negative thoughts about yourself, in instinctively you will fight back because you know what you're fighting. You see it and you, you can spot it a mile off and say, well, this is the devil. But he's more subtle than that. He doesn't play fair. So what he does is that he slips into our minds with suggestions that undermine our confidence. That's why he's called the, abuse, uh, the, the accuser of the brethren. But the Bible says that we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. So we must mentally be alert to arrest those thoughts, you know, and reject those thoughts because anything that sounds accusatory in your mind does not come from God. You can be sure of that. It can only come from one source and we must recognize that. You know, and one, the scripture talks about how we address those sorts of thoughts in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. In the King James Version, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, you know, if you read earlier in that verse, it's talking about how the weapons of our warfare are not physical, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the destruction of strongholds. And then he starts talking about strongholds of the mind and how that we have to cast down those imaginations and, you know, high things that want to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. So there's something that God knows about you. There's a knowledge that God has about you, but then there are thoughts in your mind that are trying to exalt themselves against that knowledge that God has of you. You've got to bring every such thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So in other words, let your thoughts line up with what God has said about you. Don't let your thoughts undermine you because what, you know, what is happening in your mind may not necessarily be in line with what the word of God says about you. So we've got to align our thinking to what the word of God says about us. So challenge all those negative patterns that are happening in your mind. There are a number of examples that I can give you of thought patterns which we should challenge. So for for instance, all or nothing thinking. So in other words, that simply means that, you know, in your mind, it's either all good or it's all bad. So for example, if you don't succeed as a ta at a task, in a particular task, you just say, well, I'm a total failure just because you failed at one particular task. That's an exaggeration of the true situation because one task does not make a failure of a person. Failure is never final unless we give up. That's the thing. So we've got to challenge that kind of thinking and refuse to accept it. Another thing that you know sometimes we get used to doing is magnifying our mistakes. It's like all we see is our mistakes. So that means that we focus and we dwell on our mistakes to the point that it distorts our view of our person and of the situation. You know, Mike Modok said something. He said, what you focus upon the most becomes your idea of reality. I honestly believe that because if we keep focusing on it, it becomes so magnified in our minds to the point where it's like, oh, I made this mistake. So now everybody will realize, you know, I'm an, I'm an absolute failure. You've got to reign in your mind. Be careful about the, the thoughts that you're allowing, you know, to go through your mind. Another thing that you tend to find um, when someone suffers from low self-esteem is that tendency to minimize our successes. So this just has to do with, you know, rejecting our achievements and, you know, other positive experiences that we may have had in life. You know, sometimes, you know, people talk about themselves in a way like, you know, even though they have succeeded in something, it's like it doesn't count. Um, don't minimize your successes. Celebrate them. Every single milestone in your life is worth celebrating. So if somebody gives you a compliment, accept it. Accept the compliment, you know, and believe the compliment rather than thinking, oh, no, well, it wasn't, not, wasn't anything or, you know, it was just because it was easy kind of thing. accept the compliment because those things will build your self-esteem and then also you've got to be careful about jumping to negative conclusions because you know sometimes we have a tendency to reach negative conclusions even where there is no evidence so for example you know you're thinking to yourself well my friend has not replied to my text I sent a text to them they've not replied it means that you know maybe I've made her angry or maybe he doesn't like me anymore or you know that sort of thing or maybe something is terribly wrong what if they just missed your text what if they're just busy? You know, I mean, just yesterday, <laughs> it's so funny, just yesterday, I was thinking about a, you know, a friend of mine who I hadn't spoken to in a long time, and I picked up my phone to send her a message just to say, you know, how are you doing, and all the rest of that, and I just, you know, discovered that she had sent me a text message, so we had a text exchange, she sent me a text message about a month ago, which I'd completely forgotten about, so I hadn't even responded to that at all. Imagine if she was thinking in her mind, oh, well, maybe Tommy's annoyed with me, maybe she's angry, she's not replying to my text and all that. The truth is, I did not see it. So 
you know, you've got to be careful about, you know, the conclusions that you draw and be sure that you've actually got evidence for the conclusions that you're drawing rather than mean, reading meanings into other people's actions without any evidence. Arrest those thoughts. Don't assign meanings to people's actions without solid evidence. Maybe they're just having a bad day. That's why they didn't smile at you. So you've got to, you know, think about things from a different perspective. Also, I've got to say that, you know, you've got to be careful about mistaking your feelings for facts because, you know, the fact that you feel like a failure doesn't make you a failure. So you've got to analyze your feelings and, you know, be clear that not everything that we feel is actually a fact. Not everything that we feel is actually adequate. So you've got to be careful about how you deal with things in your mind. Don't compare yourself unfavorably to other people. You know, don't forget that, you know, what people show about themselves or what they say about themselves may not be the full story. So we've got to learn how to be thankful for the life that God has given us. And don't undervalue yourself because you're valuable in the eyes of God. Challenging your thinking is so crucial. So what I really want you to do is to go back and, you know, start thinking as those thoughts are floating through your mind. Challenge them. Take time and think about it. Okay, you're, you know, in your mind, something is saying you're a failure. Are you really? If you look at it objectively, are you really? The fact that you feel that way doesn't necessarily make it through. So that's the second thing. Challenge your thinking. Now, the last thing I'd like to say is this. We need to learn how to reframe things in our mind. So reframing our perspective of ourselves. So that simply means that we adjust our thoughts and our beliefs in line with God's word. Got to be kind to ourselves in the way we think about ourselves. And you know, one of the key things to help us do that is that we've got to learn how to saturate our minds with God's love. <laughs> I want you to really get that. Saturate your mind with God's love. You know, silence the voice of your inner critic and replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts because um, you can't leave your mind in a vacuum. So if you're having a negative thought, the best way to defeat a negative thought is to replace it with a positive one. So take time, go into the scriptures, look at what the Bible says about you. Maybe take time, you know, look for 20 scriptures that talk about you, how amazing you are, how wonderful you are. You know, things like I'm fearfully and wonderfully made the scripture I read to us just now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm ready for anything and I'm equal to anything through Christ who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That's one of my key scriptures in Philippians chapter 4 or the scripture that talks about I'm the apple of God's eye. And read these scriptures to yourself daily. Let them become daily affirmations that remind you of who you are and how God sees you and your positioning in him. Saturate your mind with the word of God so that negativity does not have a place to dwell in your mind and choose thoughts that are hopeful over thoughts that are hopeless. So don't, you know, don't give in to hopeless thinking, thinking that, you know, it's the end of the world. You know, this is really tough. This is difficult. I can't cope with it and all that. Be kind and encouraging to yourself. You know, don't think that, you know, you're facing a situation and just automatically assume that it will not go well. What if it does? Tell yourself, even though it's tough, I can handle it because, you know, you'd be amazed at, at you know, the things that God has put inside you and the capacity that you have. If you would just allow that capacity to come out. You may have made mistakes in the past. It does not make you a mystic and it does not make you a failure. So go out with that kind of confidence, you know, and also I'd, I'd like to say that we've got to learn to forgive ourselves. Everyone makes mistakes. Every single human being on earth makes mistakes. No one is infallible, but mistakes are not a permanent reflection of who you are as a person. They're simply moments or snapshots in time. So don't take that snapshot and make it the whole story of your life. You know, the fact that you've made a mistake does not mean that you're going to continue to make mistakes. It just simply means that you've learned from that, you know, that, that situation now. So consider what is it that you've learned? Well, you've had a negative experience Yes, but what changes can you make next time so that you, you know, you have a more positive outcome next time? Maybe you had a business failure or you had a, a relationship failure. Reframe those experiences so that they become equity towards your future success because your last failure is the down payment or the deposit for your next success because next time you're not starting at the same level because you have a different understanding, you have a higher level of awareness and, you know, you can use that experience to, to, um, to be able to succeed the next time you start step out. So you've got to learn how to reframe the things that happen in, in your life. And, you know, above all, encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Give yourself credit for making positive changes in your life. Every single step, every single achievement, you know, celebrate it. <laughs> celebrate it. Your work celebrating and you're really, really valuable to God. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I want to leave you with one scripture that means a lot to me from Philippians chapter 4, 
um, verses 6 to 8. It says, Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, <laughs> I like that, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think continually on these things. So those are the kinds of things that you should marinate your mind in. Those are things you should saturate your mind in, in with. You know, it says center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Scripture. And then verse 9 says, The things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life. And God, who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. I'm really trusting God that you will experience peace and well-being on your, your, on, on your inside recognizing that you're truly valuable in the eyes of God. Step out and do what it is that God has called you to do. Step out and be the person that God has made you to be. Don't allow low self-esteem to hold you back because you're valuable. You're precious in the eyes of God. You've got this and God's got your back. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the precious one that is watching and know that you meant that this word would reach them today so they have not watched this by accident. I pray pray that your grace will rise up within them, that your strength will rise up within them in the name of Jesus, that they will start to see themselves in, the, in a new way. They will see themselves as you see them, O oh Lord, and they will begin to step into the fullness of all that you've planned for them in their relationships, in their marriages, in their businesses, in their work, in their finances, in everything that concerns their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your name be glorified in their lives. It is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Well, God bless you. I trust this has helped you. If this has helped you, then please leave me a message on Facebook, on Instagram, or YouTube, or wherever it is you're watching. And if you've got a question you would like me to answer, then head on over to tomitalks.com forward slash ask and I'll answer your question next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.